the computers on board the satellites overhead. These satellites, by the way, now have systems that can see not just on Earth. It can know whether you're a man or a woman and what, uh, you know, pretty well identify you. Not with exactitude, but pretty close. And now they can see 13 feet under the Earth. So, you know, you can't even go in a cave, I assume, but they can find you. And, of course, when you get that chip, or when they track your automobile, you know, at the factory, a chip goes in it, and then they're able to track you. By the way, now they're, make, they're going to be making them very soon where they can turn off your motor. You can't start it up again. You try to get away, your motor doesn't work. And they have the smart guns. The government just paid for all the money to develop the smart gun. They're going to try to take away all the other guns. The smart gun has a chip in it. And only the owner can use it. They've got maybe a chip inside their body or on a ring or something, and only that person can fire the gun. Sounds good. Because you don't want their, your gun to be left at home, and the kid get the gun out and have an accident. Sounds good to just have a chip in the gun, and only you can use it. The problem is they send a message from a remote site into your chip, and it says, don't fire. Wow, you're disarmed. And they're going to do that for your own good, of course. Now, here's the Austin American Statesman, but it's, a, it's from the New York Times originally. It says, and this is sort of interesting, it's about the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office. This is, uh, this is just really rich. Espionage agency lost track of billions. <laughs> this is dated uh, January 30th, 1996. It says, top secret office hid money in several classified rainy day accounts, officials say. The National Reconnaissance Office, the secret agency that bills spy satellites, lost track of more than $2 million in classified money last year. It appears that this money, over $2 billion, was part of their slush fund. I mean, $2 billion, but it wasn't all of their budget. It was just a little bit put aside for rainy days, a slush fund. And then they lost track of it. Now, let me tell you how this money was found. You see, Clinton wanted to send troops to Bosnia. Congress didn't quite want to fund it all. He had to find money somewhere in the defense budget. And you know what? They found billions just sitting around in a slush fund at the National Reconnaissance Office. They didn't know they had it. And now... Thank the Lord they could send those troops to Bosnia. Isn't it astonishing? It is. It's amazing. What are their ultimate plans? Here's, here's an interesting article from the Arizona Republic. There's a guy. I'm not accusing him. He probably has good intentions. Eye and sky to track kids, a teen horror. Hey, I like that as a parent, as a granddad. Let's track those kids with satellites, eyes in the sky. You can't get away, teenagers. Well, it says here uh, that Jack Dunlap envisions his eye in the sky as a way to rescue snatched children, but it sounds like a teenage nightmare. Well, it goes on to talk about the capability does exist to give kids a chip and then, you know, passive uh, transponder and then to know where they're at at all times. Sort of interesting, isn't it? What's going on? Well... Some people say, well, Tex, okay, I realize that technology can be used for evil. But is technology in itself inherently evil? Well, of course not. There are a lot of good purposes. We just uh, see this microphone. You can hear me a little bit better, I hope. I hope it does some good. I hope you get some blessing out of what we're talking about. But still, the devil can use these things for bad, for evil. Let me tell you a little bit about some projects that seem sort of strange in the computer world. And I want you to be the judge. I don't want to say that any of these men or any of these projects are intentionally of the devil. Maybe their designers didn't intentionally design them this way. Maybe it just happened. And you know, sometimes that's really true. It really is. Now, there is uh, the truth that many of the greatest scientists in the world are involved in occultism. They really are. I know for a fact, I know for a fact that there are now top secret government projects involved in trying to open up what they call the Stargate. 
to literally seek to communicate with other intelligences and other realms. They're spending your taxpayer dollars on those projects. And it's all involved with UFO aliens and all of this stuff and trying to you know, contact these people or these beings. And I believe that they are contacting them. And these men are so stupid that they really believe there are these other intelligences when they open up this key, the Stargate. They simply don't know that these other intelligences are devils. They are communicating with devils. That's what they're doing. When you study high tech, you realize that some of the greatest inventors in the world were occultists. I'll, I'll give you an example. A man that you have to admire for all his many inventions, Thomas Alva Edison. But he was involved in the cultism. In fact, he was a member of the Theosophy Society. You know, Helena Blavatsky's group believed in reincarnation. When he died, they say that he, his last invention, he was trying to, communi uh, to invent a machine that could communicate with spirits, with the spirit world. I guess he had never heard of the Ouija board, right? You know? <laughs> Nikola Tesla is one of the world's greatest scientists who ever lived. If it were not for Tesla, we really wouldn't have uh, the, the light, lighting that we have now. Although uh, Edison is given credit, you know, for the first light bulb and all that. Tesla uh, developed the generators and all of that, so we have the big power plants and so forth. Fantastic inventions. In fact, when he died, uh, he lived alone in a, a grimy little uh, hotel room. Uh, uh, government agents swooped upon the place and took away the safe where he had all his secret plans. Nobody even knows what's in there. He said he could create a weapon using just the electrical waves in the air that you could that, that a, a nation could literally conquer the whole world with, and he had the plans for it. I believe he was given his plans by the devil and his agents. You see, the devil is very intelligent. I mean, he's lived for thousands and thousands of years. And he knows technology, too. And sometimes, and I'm not saying I think they're Christian scientists, too. Praise God for them. But still, there are some of these men. Tesla, for example. Here was a brilliant man. But each day, he would go to a, a city park across from his hotel. The poor fellow, you have to feel sorry for him. And there, he would seek to communicate with a pigeon. He believed the pigeon was the reincarnation of a soulmate, a woman that he loved in the past life. How sad. He lived alone, had no friends, died penniless. After creating inventions worth billions, people such as George Westinghouse took advantage of him. You know, the Westinghouse Electric and so forth. And made him just sign over these inventions for almost peanuts. But Tesla was mixed up, you see. And I really believe, he said that on his, in his inventions, he didn't work step by step. But suddenly, the whole thing came to him at once. Everything. And then he would sit down and write it all out. But it was all in his head. It, a picture appeared. I think very interesting. Did you know that it was Stephen Jobs and, and, and Steve Wozniak of Apple Computer who gave us the first personal computer, Right? And they founded Apple Computer Company. Have you ever wondered why their symbol is the apple with a bite out of it? Any analogies there in, in Bible? Did you know, too, that Stephen Jobs is a New Ager? And uh, I have pictures of him meditating.